Have you heard about this recent news that's been coming out of China? This is pretty wild, and the implications of it are potentially world-changing. So China has recently come out and said that they have plans to build an enclosed habitat, or a mini-biosphere, on the dark side of the moon. These plans are set to come into motion really soon, with the first artificial habitat going to the moon on the Chang'e 4 lander-rover combo mission that's landing on the moon in December of this year. This small, automated biolab will be placed on the surface, where a series of steps will hopefully establish a working, sustainable biome. First, the biolab will grow plants by directing sunlight into the grow chamber. The plants will consume carbon dioxide, and they'll emit oxygen. And eventually, this will be able to support waxworms as they hatch out of their cocoons. The waxworms, and the silkworms being animals, will exhale carbon dioxide that the plants can breathe. And this establishes the very basic basis of a sustainable ecological symbiosis. More plants and animals can be slowly added to keep the oxygen-carbon dioxide balance in check, while increasing the complexity of the ecosystem. Now, China has already grown plants in microgravity, like rice and Arabidopsis, but now they're moving on to the moon, which has just 16% of Earth's gravity, and no atmosphere to speak of, which means the temperatures fluctuate wildly between the days and nights. They have to maintain the habitat at an Earth-like temperature, between 1 and 30 degrees Celsius. While outside, the moon's surface will cycle between 100 degrees Celsius above during the day and 100 degrees Celsius below during the night. Mind you, this is the moon's day and night, as the moon rotates around us, just because uh, we call it the dark side of the moon, uh, more appropriately called the far side of the moon, doesn't mean it's actually dark. The, the far side of the moon actually gets pretty much just as much light as the, the near side of the moon. Anyway, it'll be really interesting to see how this pans out. Potatoes and Arabidopsis are pretty easy plants to grow, but the moon is a weird environment. Seeing how plants and insects grow here in this uh, gravity environment and this temperature environment it could provide valuable insights into how well humans will be able to adapt to life in a potential future moon habitat. Now at the beginning of this little segment, I said that this experiment could have world-changing implications. It might seem a little, I don't know, counterintuitive, or a little uh, hyperbolic, to say that something as small as a little enclosed habitat, deposited on the lunar surface via a robot, could be so important. But consider this. There are currently a handful of formal international agreements that litigate the ownership and usage of resources in outer space. This might seem complicated, but when you really look at it, it's, it's not complicated at all, because these legal agreements basically say that no one owns space. No one owns astronomical objects. And all of space is a frontier that's equally controlled or uncontrolled by all humans. Now, the words in these declarations are pretty idealistic. I mean, it's a beautiful thought. It would be great if humanity could uh, explore the stars united in peace as a single faction or a single entity, you know, the human species, and not one particular nation state or group of nations or a group of corporations or something. It would be nice if our expansion into space didn't carry with it a lot of this socio-political and cultural baggage that we've kind of mired ourselves in here on Earth. One of the biggest problems here is that no one has really yet developed any off-Earth colonies or made any claims to asteroid minerals or something, so it's all pretty abstract in the first place. And then you have to consider the practical aspect of enforcement. It's just not financially or politically feasible to enforce laws like this. Like, what are you going to do? Go to the moon and arrest people? Are we going to have space police now? The truth is, the moment you get state actors up in space, putting their assets on the moon or capturing asteroids, these idealistic agreements are going to be forgotten. Overnight. It'll be a mad scramble among the space powers 
to lay claim and gobble up as many resources as are immediately available. You can figure when the race for resources in space really heats up, territory on the moon will be in high demand. And for better or for worse, this will bring Earth-based zoning laws and property laws and all the associated bureaucracy and cultural values and expectations with us into space. So why is this relevant? Well, growing food in a given region is a pretty strong claim to ownership of that territory, which means that China could arguably be exerting political dominance over lunar real estate as early as this year. If you think other spacefaring countries are going to sit idly by, you're mistaken. The humble Arabidopsis and the potato seeds could potentially be the seeds of the beginning of a new space race for the 21st century. This should get everyone excited, because that has the potential to change the world.